All right, what's up? So uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, partition coefficients, um, lipophilicity, and um, sort of um, how it all comes together with uh, the different um, uh, molecules and the membrane thing that's happening. Um, honestly, um, it's uh, not um, tested a whole lot, uh, but the concepts, uh, they do come back uh, a couple times, not like in this form, but um, you will see them in like FTM2 and stuff, um, and uh, as well as CPR, so you might as well just uh, kind of get an idea of it right now, but partition coefficient itself is not going to really come up too much more than this. Um, I would just uh, know this, and that's really it, all you have to know with this thing. Um, but we're just going to go ahead and jump straight into it. So first of all, um, the whole point of this um, thing uh, that we're talking about is, uh, like partition coefficients, is to sort of uh, measure um, a substance um, and whether or not it prefers the, um, the lipid phase or the aqueous phase, right? So whether or not it prefers the uh, lipid or the aqueous phase is going to determine whether or not the uh, substance is going to cross the cell membrane, right? Because the cell membrane is um, lip as a lipid, right? It's phospholipids. So basically, uh, depending on what your partition coefficient is going to be, it's going to determine whether or not this substance is going to cross over um, across the membrane and, and do its thing. So anyways, let's break it down uh, step by step and let's take a look at what uh, we have to work with with this. So the first thing you want to see is the partition coefficient. So the equation for this, I definitely know this though, it's pretty easy though. So the equation for partition coefficient is going to be the concentration of the uh, substance, solute, whatever it is, um, in the uh, uh, oil phase, oil, over the concentration of the substance um, in the water phase. And this is just going to be a straight up uh, ratio. So basically it's going to be this over this. Um, the oil phase is going to translate into the lipid phase. And the uh, water phase is going to translate into the aqueous phase, as you could have probably guessed. And basically if this is more, meaning that you have a higher concentration of the substance in the oil phase, then what that means is that it has a um, higher affinity uh, for uh, lipids. So basically it's going to be lipophilic if it has a higher affinity for lipids. However, if the substance is mostly in the, um, in the water, meaning the aqueous phase, then that means that um, the uh, substance is going to have a higher affinity for uh, the aqueous phase, meaning that it's going to be hydrophilic. So depending on that, um, it's going to tell you whether or not this thing can cross the cell membrane. So let's go ahead and take a look at uh, what we mean by that. So partition coefficient, we're going to call it B, as I'm pretty sure they do in your lecture slides. Um, and it's going to be, let's say, in this case, the first case that we're given, it's equal to 1. So if you have a partition coefficient that's equal to 1, basically what that's telling you is that this thing, whatever substance it is, it doesn't have any um, uh, difference in affinity for the oil or the water phase. So basically what that's going to say uh, to you is that whatever the concentration is out here in the oil phase, let's say it's um, 500 in the oil phase, it's going to be the same exact thing in the water phase. It's going to also be 500 and it's going to give you a uh, partition coefficient of one. So it's found in either phase. That's basically what's telling you with that. That's your baseline to work with. All right. Now, what does that look like um, on a uh, on a graph? Well, okay. Well, actually, let's let's hold off for that in a second. We're just going to talk about um, the other two, and then we'll get back to the graphs in a second. All right. So the next thing we'll look at is let's say we have a uh, substance with a partition coefficient. Um, which is actually not not equal to one. In this case, it's going to be greater than one. Okay. So in this case, if you have a partition coefficient that's greater than one, basically what that's telling you is that let's say that instead of 500 here, we're going to have um, let's say 800. Whatever the number is, doesn't really matter as long as it's higher than whatever is in the water phase. Then clearly, it's showing that it has a higher affinity for the lipid or the oil phase, right? Which if you just do the math, it's really simple. It's going to give you something that's greater than one. So basically what this is saying is that this thing has a preference, okay, for the lipid phase. Now, what does that mean? Well, as we said, if you draw your cell, what is the stuff that's lining the outside of the cell? Remember this, right? What is, what is this guy right here? 
This is your phospholipid bilayer, right? So your phospholipid bilayer is going to be a bilayer um, that's made up of lipids, right? So basically what it's saying that if you have a molecule, right, that has a high affinity for the uh, lipid phase, that means that it can easily cross through the phospholipid bilayer. It can just pass straight through it because it can easily go into the lipid, uh, the lipid phase because that's what it prefers, right? So what kind of molecules will you see that, that are gonna do that? Well, they're most likely going to be things like oxygen, carbon dioxide. Basically, they're going to be um, small and uh, uncharged molecules. And uh, they're going to easily pass through the phospholipid bilayer, and that's basically what they're trying to tell you with this whole thing. All right, so now let's look over um, to the other side, and let's see a situation where you have a, uh, a partition coefficient that is um, um, less than 1. So in this case, let's say that, okay, so this was 500 again. We're just going to use the baseline of whatever we established. And then we'll say up here is 300, right? So 300 is less than 500. We know that. And if you divide it out, you'll get a number that's less than one. But what does this mean? So basically what this means is that it has a higher affinity, right, for the water phase than it does the lipid phase, okay? So that means that whenever you look at the cell, once again, the cell is lined by this guy right here, which is a phospho lipid bilayer. If this thing has a low affinity for the lipid phase, is it going to cross the phospholipid bilayer? No, it's not going to cross it and it's basically going to get rejected. It's going to stay in the aqueous phase in the ECF because the ECF is most likely, um, actually in most cases it's, it's highly aqueous, right? So basically what you're going to see is um, these molecules are not going to pass through and they're going to be stuck on the uh, outside. They're not going to cross into the cell membrane. That's all this is really trying to say. So what kind of molecules are going to do that? Um, well, you're going to see large molecules, right? And you're also going to see charged molecules. Let's not confuse us. Charged molecules. And charged molecules are going to be things like uh, really anything, right? So it's going to be like sodium, uh, potassium, um, uh, chlorine. And what do these things usually need to cross into the cell membrane? They're gonna they're gonna need some sort of like transporter. They're gonna need some sort of ion channel. They're gonna need some sort of gated something. Basically, active transport, whatever it is, something to help them get uh, get through. While these ones, they can usually just freely diffuse through the uh, the um, cell membrane. That's the difference here. Um, so basically, yeah, that's what's telling you. These molecules can pass easily. These molecules cannot pass easily, and it's dependent on um, whether or not they have an affinity for the lipid phase, which these ones do or if they have um, an affinity for the water phase, which means that they don't have an affinity for the lipid phase. If you like to think about it that way, you can do, think about it that way, and they're gonna be stuck on the outside. Large, um, charged molecules, things like that. This is gonna be important um, more for uh, FTM2. Um, it's not gonna be presented the same way, but in FTM2, they're gonna tell you basically, um, whenever you have like uh, the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation with like these charged um, uh, sort of ions uh, that are, um, uh, with drugs and whatever, um, with pharmaco pharmacodynamics and pharmacokinetics, they uh, if they're charged, they won't be able to uh, pass into the uh, cell membrane. That's how you usually excrete things, right? So if it's not charged, basically, um, sorry, if it, if it is charged, basically what's going to happen is it's going to stay in like your urine or whatever, and it's going to be excreted out um, uh, with your pee. Uh, which is what's going to happen with a lot of drugs and other substances um, that you're going to see in FTM2. However, if it is um, going to be uh, lipid soluble, if it's, if it's lipid soluble and it can cross into the cell membrane, then you're going to be able to reabsorb the drug or reabsorb whatever. But you'll talk a lot about that more in FTM2. This is a good way to set it up though. If you can keep this in mind whenever you're doing the other stuff, um, it makes it a lot easier to uh, conceptualize. So anyways, so that's the basis with that. Um, now, now let's go ahead and uh, talk about these graphs really quickly. Um, don't worry about the graphs too much. Uh, we'll go through them, but um, they're not really the, uh, the main conceptual point for this. The main conceptual point was all this that just happened right there, um, but we'll talk about the graphs. So basically, what are these graphs saying? Let's figure it out step by step. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and partition this guy off. 
All right. So let's say the first one, okay, is when we had our partition coefficient equals one, right? So that means it has no uh, preference, one second, for the, um, the water or the, uh, the um, lipid phase. And basically what it's saying is we're gonna take a look at it and see how it's affecting the flux. So here's your barrier, right? That's your, uh, that's your membrane. And here is your C1 value, okay? So that's your concentration, okay? And then here's your concentration on the inside, right? So usually, things are gonna go down their concentration gradient, right? So the reason why we drew it like this is because if you have a higher concentration on the outside, lower concentration on the inside, this is going to be, this right here, um, is going to be your flux. It's gonna denote your flux into the cell. So basically what this is saying, the slope of this thing is saying that it's gonna flux inwards um, at uh, whatever it's gonna be. If you have a higher slope, that means the slope is even more steep, steeper, um, then you're gonna have a greater uh, flux, but if you have a lower sto slope, that means your flux is gonna be less. And we're gonna look at that in a second, but let's take a look at the equation. So what the equation was saying, to put it into um, perspective, is that this is the fixed law equation, right? So the fixed law equation looks like this. So this is x, this is your barrier right there. These are just your other coefficients, don't worry about them right now. But here's the main one, so the, the, your difference in uh, concentration, right? So that's talking about this point and this point, all right? So if this is greater, right, if you increase it, then what's gonna happen? Your flux is gonna increase, right? Because it's going to be a one-to-one uh, -one ratio. So the flux will increase. Um, if you decrease that, the flux will decrease, right? So let's talk about this in relation to the other graphs. All right, so the next graph we're gonna look at is going to be, and it'll make sense in a second, the next graph that we're gonna look at is gonna be the uh, partition coefficient whenever it's greater than one. That means that this thing prefers the lipid phase. All right, now, once again, let's draw a lipid membrane, okay? Let's draw this C1 point at the same point, all right? and the C2 point at the same point again. Okay, this is no different than that, all right? So, what is gonna happen whenever you have a, um, a substance that prefers the lipid phase over the uh, aqueous phase? Well, what's, what that's gonna tell you is that it's gonna wanna be inside of this lipid membrane, meaning it's gonna wanna pass into that way more than something that um, has a, uh, a lower B value, right? So basically what it's gonna do is it's actually going to augment, right? It's gonna augment the slope of your uh, concentration gradient. So what that's gonna do is it's actually going to theoretically increase this concentration gradient uh, slope um, for all intents and purposes. And basically what that means is that it's going to increase your flux, right? And that's all it's saying there. And the reason why this is happening is because this substance, whatever it is, it has an affinity for the lipid phase, so it's gonna easily pass into it. And if you just think about it just conceptually, like if something has a uh, higher affinity for the lipid phase um, and it can pass through the membrane quicker, is the flux gonna be quicker? Yeah, obviously it's gonna be more, like, you know, it, it's, it's just, even if you don't wanna think about it this way, you can still figure out these questions. But anyways, that's how you sort of have to conceptualize it with this weird graph that they gave us. So then the next one would be if it's less than one. So if it's less than one, if B is less than one, that means that it prefers the aqueous phase, right? Because we saw that, you know, it's oil over water and it's gonna be less than one if your water phase is higher, right? We already talked about that, so we won't go into that anymore, but let's look at this lipid membrane, right? So here's your X again, here's your C1, it's gonna be the same, and here is your C2, it's gonna be the same as well. And basically here, what's happening in this side, in this, in this uh, one is basically, um, this thing is gonna have a higher affinity for the, um, the water phase and it's gonna have the lipid phase. So what it's effectively going to do is it's actually going to dampen your concentration gradient. So it's effectively dampening your concentration gradient. It's kind of weird to look at it this way, but if you can just sort of conceptualize it, why is it doing that? Well, basically, if you want to think of the molecules, you know, out here, they're trying to go in and then they can't. 
they're they're getting rejected out here in the aqueous phase and they're just staying in the aqueous phase right so basically what's happening here all it's saying is uh, is that it's just having a hard time crossing the lipid membrane and that's why your uh, concentration gradient is effectively dampened it's effectively lower which means that your flux will be effectively lower as well and that's it that's all this is really talking about it's trying to cross and it can't in this case in this case it's trying to cross right and it can it can cross really easily which means that it can go into this much quicker it can go into the lipid membrane much quicker this one is just on both sides so what this one would show is something like this and basically it can just pass through either direction it doesn't really care it can just go whichever way it wants to it has no affinity for either um, other than that that's really it with all this. Um, it's just kind of putting together a couple concepts of like flux um, versus, um, uh, what is it? Your uh, permeability as, as far as like different ions and stuff like that. Just remember if it's charged, there's probably a chance that um, it will um, not be super, super lipid soluble. Um, but if it's like, or if it's a large molecule, but if it's something small, um, something that's, uh, just uncharged, um, it's gonna probably be able to uh, cross through, so just watch out what they give you. Um, but other than that, um, here's if you wanna take a screenshot or anything of that, um, and other than that, that should be about it with this. All right, sounds good.